ஹரே கிருஷ்ண 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 ஹரே 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 ராம ஹரே ராம 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 ஹரே ஹரே ஸ்ரீல பிரபுபாதி கி ஜாய் ஸோ தேங்க்யூ டு ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ ஹவ் டேக்கன் யுவர் டைம் ஆன் திஸ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஏப்ரல் டு பார்ட்டிசிபேட் இன் திஸ் பியூட்டிஃபுல் டாபிக் ஆஃப் நெக்டர் ஆஃப் இன்ஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன் பிரதேஷ் அமிர்தா வேர்ஸ் நம்பர் டென் திஸ் இஸ் பை ரூபகோ சுவாமி ஸோ வில் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆஃப் ஆஸ் வி யூஸ்வலி டு எனி திங் வித் ரிகார்ட் டு you know chaitanya mahaprabhu or his uh, disciples and uh, um, his followers we will chant this mantra jaya jaya shri chaitanya jaya nityananda jaya dvaita chandra jaya gaur bhakta vrinda jaya jaya shri chaitanya jaya nityananda jaya dvaita chandra jaya gaur bhakta vrinda ஜாய ஜாய ஸ்ரீ சைத்தன்ய ஜாய நித்தியானந்தா ஜாயத்வைத்த சந்திர ஜாய கௌர பக்த விருந்தா ஆல் க்ளோரிஸ் டு லார்ட் ஸ்ரீ சைத்தன்ய மகாபிரபு ஆல் க்ளோரிஸ் டு லார்ட் நித்தியானந்தா ஆல் க்ளோரிஸ் டு அத்வைத் ஆச்சாரியா ஆல் க்ளோரிஸ் டு ஆல் த டிவோட்டிஸ் ஆஃப் லார்ட் ஸ்ரீ சைத்தன்ய மகாபிரபு ஸோ வி வில் கெட் ஸ்டார்டட் பட் அகெயின் வி வில் சேன் சம் மோர் மந்திரா So, so this is a prayer by Srila Balade Vidya Bhushan to Rupa Goswami. Dushkarani Kavitwani E Karoti Mahabala Shri Rupa Kavi Bhupe Me Sa Deyad Buddhi Sampatam. May the mighty king of poets, Shri Rupa, who composes poetry that is very difficult to write, grant me the wealth of intelligence needed to understand his verses. So hopefully all of you are able to see the screen as well, correct? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. okay, so these are very important uh, verses. Uh, repetition causes retention. So these, uh, this is another beautiful verse uh, where it says, clasping a, a straw between my teeth, repeatedly I beg to obtain the dust of Srila Rupa Goswami's lotus feet, birth after birth. So this is the prayer by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami to Rupa Goswami. So we will chant the Mangal Charan prayers as we all know that. um if you're on mute uh, that doesn't matter you can still chant it uh, at your homes om agyana timirandasya gananjana shalakaya chakshurun melita mena tasmay shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobishtam sthapitam mena bhutale swayam rupam ramayam dadadi swapadantikam vandeham shri guru shri yudapatamalam shri guru namaha shri rupam sarvajatam sagana ragunathamitam tam sachitam sadvaitam savadutam parijana sagitam krishna chaitanya devam ீனம் ராதாஸ்து பிரணமாமி ஹரி ஜாய் ஸ்ரீ கிருஷ்ண ஹரே கிருஷ்ணா ஹரே கிருஷ்ணா 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 ஹரே 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 ராம ஹரே ராம 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 ஹரே ஸ்ரீல பிரபுபாதி கி சோ ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ ஹவ் காம் த்ரூ நைன் வர்சஸ் சோ ஃபார் அண்ட் யூ நோ ஜஸ்ட் அ குட் ரீகேப் ஆஃப் வாட் இஸ் உபதேஷ் அமிர்தா சோ திஸ் உபதேஷ் அமிர்தா மீன்ஸ் இன்ஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன்ஸ் அமிர்தா மீன்ஸ் நெக்டர் அண்ட் உபதேஷ் அமிர்தா இஸ் அ புக் ஆஃப் நெக்டேரியன் இன்ஸ்ட்ரக்ஷன்ஸ் ஃபார் ஆல் ஆஃப் அஸ் and um it is very dear to all of us it should be dear to all of us and it it's supposed to be like a necklace that is supposed to be worn in our necks at all times um um origin of upadesha amrita so when chaitanya mahaprabhu was in jagannath puri he was in ecstasy and um he was drowning in this ocean of uh, happiness bliss uh, when he was thinking of lord krishna uh, whenever he sees a blue ocean he remembered of lord krishna because he's got blue color when he seeing the trees and uh, sand mountains he is thinking of vrindavan and govardhan hill and he was and he was overwhelmed in ecstasy and uh, with 
great difficulties all these wonderful devotees brought him back to external consciousness and then slowly but surely and softly chaitanya mahaprabhu started instructing the devotees uh, where rupa goswami was there and rupa goswami um, recorded these instructions in the form of these 11 wonderful verses which became known as upadeshamrita um, so there are 11 verses uh, that constitute the fundamental instruction okay these are not you know at the highest level but fundamental instructions to guide our activities in in bhakti yoga and um, you know these are indispensable to all of us uh, who are practicing uh, krishna consciousness so a quick glance at the 11 um, verses um, the first uh, uh, two verses deals with uh, unfavorable things to bhakti what we need to avoid are the six uh, uh, urges of the mind speech anger tongue belly and genitals and six vices are um, you know overeating over endeavoring uh, useless talk improper compliance with scriptural rules bad association and greed and verses three to seven deal with um, you know favorable things that are favorable to bhakti that we need to adopt so the first uh, uh, two verses are what we need to avoid the next uh, one, two, three, four, five verses are what we need to adopt because they are favorable to bhakti. We need to have determination, right? We cannot chant, we cannot do any, um, you know, if you didn't have determination, you won't be here on this Friday evening. So all of you have got the enthusiasm, having the determinations, you have the patience because we don't complete it in 10 minutes, we go through for an hour or more. Uh, the prescribed practices uh, that you are already following, uh, whether you're initiated or non-initiated, uh, you have prescribed practices, uh, going to the temple, performing this service, etc. Um, you know, we try to avoid uh, more and more of the bad association and we follow in the footsteps of Acharya. So for us, Prabhupada has given us whatever we need and we follow the instructions of Prabhupada, whether we are, uh, whether we are, uh, as I can see from who's there, nobody is initiated disciple of A.C. Bhaktivinoda Swami Shri Prabhupada, but it does not matter because all the gurus that um, we are initiated to, uh, many Diksha gurus are there, but they follow the instructions that is given by Srila Prabhupada. So they don't deviate from that. So that's following the footsteps of the Acharya because Prabhupada has given us all these purports and instructions based on Acharyas, including uh, Rupa Goswami. So we need to follow in the footsteps. Uh, six loving exchanges, you know, uh, gifts and sharing of art and feeding one another, which is the prasad. And uh, the different types of devotees are there and not associating with pure uh, are not seeing pure devotees from material vision. So we cannot just put them in one bucket. Yeah, he looks like this, so he's not a, a great person or he's a materialist, uh, etc. Right. So we know the pastimes of uh, um, pure devotees uh, who, uh, even devotees who made mistakes when they look at pure devotees, we know how Pundarik Vidyanidhi uh, mistook, uh, uh, you know, Gadadhar Pandit, uh, opposite Gadadhar Pandit mistook, uh, uh, Pundarik Vidyanidhi, etc. Right. So from material vision, we cannot, um, you know, uh, judge anybody. Don't judge the book by the cover. Right. So awakening dormant taste for Krishna's names and Krishna's unlimited. So his names are unlimited. Um, of course, this mantra, um, Kali Santarana Upanishad mantra is given to us by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu itself, which, which is this Hare Krishna Mahamantra. But there are a thousand names of Lord Vishnu, which is Lord Krishna given to us by Bhishma from the bed of arrows as well. And we have unlimited names. Uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself prays in this, uh, you know, in, 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 in his, uh, I think it's the seventh verse where he says, Krishna, your names are unlimited, right? So there's no hard and fast rule uh, of chanting the names as well. So uh, we are, we have to awaken the dormant taste for Krishna's names and physically or mentally, of course, we can't recite because you're all in west end of uh, the GTA and uh, I'm in the east end. So we are not physically there, but mentally we can always be there. So we've been, most of you would have seen the video or you've been to, uh, you know, these holy places. Uh, so we, we we can mentally recite there or be there instantaneously because mind does not need time to travel like an airplane that I have to take to go to Vancouver or I'm going to go to uh, uh, Texas, which takes about three and a half hours to go on Monday. So here in the mind, when you close the eyes and when you think of Radha Kund, you're there. You've been there, if you're there, it's an action replay. So residing in Braja mentally, uh, staying there, residing in the holy spot of Radha Kund, and then uh, and then nine, uh, nine, ten, and eleven, uh, eight, nine, ten, and eleven is 
physically or um, mentally residing in the holy places right and then shrimati radharani and uh, radha kunda the most dear to krishna and bathing in radha kunda and taking shelter of radharani so these are the seven 11 verses and uh, we'll focus on uh, verse number 10 about shrimati radharani radha kund but much more than that as well based on the verse that we will read uh, today so those are the 11 verses now what i did was i i i connected uh, between the nine stages of bhakti we covered this in uh, one of the sessions uh, which is from bhakti rasamrita sindhu um and and connected uh, connected that to the 11 verses of upadeshamrita okay so how it goes from um, shraddha to prema so if you remember we covered this uh, maybe a few months ago the nine stages of bhakti we are not talking about nine forms of devotional service which we know is shravanam kirtanam vishnu shravanam pada sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam satyam atmanivedam so we are not talking about the nine process of devotional service which is given which was actually given by uh, narada muni to pralad maharaj when he was in the womb of his mother and then he gave it to all of us when he actually preached this verse or narrated this verse directly to hiranyakashipu which we read from the seventh canto we are not talking about the seven forms of the uh, nine forms of devotional service but we are talking about nine stages of bhakti and the nine stages of bhakti are the initial faith which is called as shraddha uh, so the first three verses of this upadesha amrita which you have covered already right so you are in the 10th verse so that means you have covered you know a vast uh, number of ver- uh, percentage in this upadesha amrita so the first three verses uh, is in the in the bucket of shraddha which is faith and then verses 4 and 6 in the supadesha amrita uh, is about sadhu shraddha association with devotees but um, the text 7 actually includes a very important verse it it, it deals with uh, bhajana kriya which is following the regulative principles anartha nivritti with stopping unwanted things nishta is firm faith okay shraddha is faith the initial seeds are there but nishta is firm faith okay even when things don't go our way we we think it's best for us and lord krishna has got a bigger plan than what we have and uh, we 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 actually believe in krishna's timing okay so not our timing for anything to happen so it's krishna's no krishna knows the timing so that is the firm faith even if things don't go our way uh we are uh, focusing more and more and in god consciousness so that's the maturity that we need as we chant more as we are in krishna consciousness uh more and more you know more number of years so that's important that we have this firm firm faith that even when things go wrong it's the best that can happen to me because something good is going to happen spiritually overall and i need this to purify myself to remove the contamination and it's going to go make me stronger ruchi stays for not just hearing and chanting but the whole of devotional service right so we need to have the taste or the or the or the um, the ruchi to perform devotional service when we talk about shravanam kirtanam vishnu saranam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam archanam archanam the ultimate authority of archanam is prithu maharaj and if you're wondering how come prithu maharaj we don't read about prithu maharaj because there are multitude multiple chapters in the fourth canto that deals with prithu maharaj who's an incarnation of lord krishna by the way one of the greatest kings and uh, where did he do archanam you know we typically know you know you do archana in some of these um, you know temples uh, that we see in south india he didn't we didn't read anything in the fourth uh, canto about archana done by uh, prithu maharaj but he is the ultimate authority of archana so where did we is that missing in uh, shrimad bhagavatam or what no actually we read about the 99 horse sacrifices the fire sacrifices that he did and the horse sacrifice that he did aswamedha yagya that is the highest form of archana so this our acharya has explained he is the ultimate authority in this like we have shravanam who heard this it's maharaj parikshit who spoke about it who, who got the ultimate um, uh uh realization and ultimate benefit of uh kirtanam is sukdev goswami like that we have uh, authorities in each of the nine forms of devotional service uh, archanam is prithu maharaj because he did so many fire sacrifices um 99 he did he could not create this universal record because indra you know we you know the pastor where he stole the horses uh, uh, horse more than twice actually um and then even when lord appeared when maha like when lord vishnu appeared he said i don't want you it's a double action right vishnu is speaking to uh, uh 
uh, you know, the great personality, Prithu Maharaj, and he's saying, it's okay, stop. You don't need to go in, 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 uh, and beat or equal even the record of uh, Indra. You can stop at 99. So you cannot, we cannot progress in Krishna consciousness if we don't have this, um, you know, determination, right? So it's very important that we have this uh, determination. So uh, that's the taste. We need the taste for, um, you know, performing these devotional activities as well. And then our Shakti means deep attachment to whatever we are doing spiritually. And then text nine to 11 of the Supadesh Amrita uh, forms under, falls under these two buckets of this nine stages of bhakti, which is bhava, which is ecstatic emotional state and prema is pure love for Krishna. And that's, that's the verse that we are going to read today because it's the ninth verse, it's a 10th verse. Uh, which falls into this last bucket. So that's the correlation between the nine stages of bhakti and the 11 verses of Upadesha. Okay. okay, so this is the verse, verse number 10. Okay, so I will, um, you know, try to um, uh, read that and then uh, one of you can also do that. So you can practice along uh, when I'm chanting, even though you're on mute, you can be on mute uh, as we go through this, okay? Karma, pya, Parito Hare Priyataya Vyaktim Yayunyanina Tebyonyana Vimukta Bhakti Parama Premaika Nishtastata Tebyasta Pashupala Pankajadrishas Tapyo Pisaradika Prashta tatvadiyam tadiya sarasi tam nasha eka kriti. I'll read that once more. Karma pya parito hare priyataya vyakti mya yurnyani na te bhyonyana vimukta bhakti parama. Pre my Ganeshta Stata Te Piesta Pashupala Panka Jadrishas Tapio Pisaradika Prishta Tatpadiyam Tadiya Sarasi Tam Nasha Eka Kriti. Would anybody like to read that? If you have a if you have a melody or, or, or the meter, then it will be very easy to read any of the verses, even if you're reading it for the first time. Once you know which meter it, it falls under, then it will be very easy. So this is a this is a meter that is assigned to that. It goes like this. It says like, Tunde tandavani ratim vinatvitanute tundavali labdaye karna so that that particular verse, uh, you know, where 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 Rupa Goswami wrote, and where, where he says, "I need you know thousands and thousands of tongues and years when the holy name eventually goes and dances in the courtyard of the heart, then it makes the uh, senses in it because the mind is also controlled." So it's the same sort of, sort of meter. Would anybody like to read this? I can try, Prabhuji. Yeah. Karmi Bhaya Parito Hare Priyataya Vyatim Yayur Gyani Nams Devyo Gyana Bhimukta Bhakti Parama Premaika Nistha Tatha Devya Stapa Sufala Pankaja Drishas Tavyo Pisaradhika Presta Tadvadiyam Tadiya Sarasi Tam Nasrayet Beautiful, very well done. Wonderful. Yeah, once we catch the meter, so this was uh, taught to me early by, um, you know, at least 15 years ago by uh, Dravid Prabhu. And uh, once you catch the meter, very easy, you know, you can, because most of these prayers in Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, prayers by Queen Kunti, prayers by Muchukunda, pray, I mean, Srimad Bhagavatam is basically full of prayers, right? In every pastime, you have so many prayers, Brahma's prayers, 
um, when the uh, when Mother Earth was overburdened, you know, all the wonderful prayers throughout Srimad Bhagavatam follows a, almost a set, you know, it'll be either, um, you know, Anishtub meter, you know, like Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yome Bhakti, that, that type of meter. In many of them, it's like, Vasam Siji Nani Yatavihaya Navani Grinnat, you know, so that'll be some of those. Then many of them will, will follow the um uh, go go when the madipur that was many of the uh, that tune many of the uh, verses in shrimad bhagavatam falls under that particular meter so this is very rare uh, that you have this long verses because even the fifth canto of shrimad bhagavatam these are like prose verses right so they're not um they're not uh, typically uh, meters uh, but it's uh, like long statements right but definitely many of the rupa goswami's uh, verses falls under this particular uh, um, meter okay so will somebody be kind enough to read the english translation of this wonderful nectar of instruction verse number 10 please uh, yeah please go ahead in the shastra it is said that of all types of fruity workers he who is advanced in knowledge of the higher values of life is favored by the supreme lord hari out of many such people who are advanced in knowledge gnanis one who is practically liberated by virtue of his knowledge may take to devotional service he is superior to the others however one who has actually attained prema pure love of krishna is, is superior to him the gopis are exalted above all the advanced devotees because they are always totally dependent upon Shri Krishna, the transcendental cowherd boy. Among the gopis, Srimati Radha Rani is the most dear to Krishna. Her Kunda lake is as profoundly dear to Lord Krishna as this most beloved of the gopis. Who who then will not reside at a Radha Kunda and in a spiritual body surcharged with ecstatic devotional feelings, Aprakrita Bhava, render loving service to the divine couple Shri Shri Radha Govinda, who perform their Ashtakaliya Leela, their eternal eightfold daily pastimes. Indeed, those who execute devotional service on the banks of Radha Kunda uh, are the most fortunate people in the universe. Beautiful. Very well read. Uh, now, there's a lot of information packed into this verse, like just like the ninth verse that uh, you had covered. Um, you know, different devotees and even, you know, in education system, different people will grasp things uh, differently. Some of them will read and they will understand. Some of them would like to have a pictorial view of what is stated here. And that's the majority of the people, right? Like you, you understand a map and then you drive and go, right? So picture, right? So if you're remembering somebody, you'll remember his face and the video of that, etc. So most of, many of us will like to have a visual depiction. So um, I've tried my best to put this in a form of a hierarchical uh, structure here. So, uh, so if you see here, right from the bottom of it, so uh, Srila Prabhupada actually is including one more group here, which is Vikarmis, right? So uh, as you just heard by Mother Mahalakshmi uh, reading the translation, um, that Vikarmi is not mentioned in this verse at all, but Srila Prabhupada adds that uh, in the translation and, and in the uh, actually in the purport, right? He, he talks about this Vikarmis as well. So right from the bottom up, so I put a ladder on the left hand side here. So maybe I should, uh, you know, I should have moved this little bit to each one of the runs, but you get the point, right? So Vikarmis are not part of this ladder that is described by Rupa Goswami. So Vikarmis are outside of that. And I and I didn't put a gradual step thinking that this is this is like from nothing to the highest form, right? So I put that in the form of a ladder. And then Krishna is right there uh, at, the, at the top rung of the ladder. You can say to reach Krishna, you have to be in the top rung to be like, uh, to have the devotion like uh, Srimati Radharani. So outside of this ladder, in the in the purport by Srila Prabhupada, he describes Vikarmis. So Vikarmis means they engage in impious acts. They do not take guidance from uh, Vedic scripture, right? So uh, I think it's, I think I, have, I may have a slide 4.17 where 
uh, there is a beautiful description of um, uh, what is karma, what is uh, akarma, and what is vikarma, right? So vikar means means they they engage in impious because vikarma means prohibited actions, right? So uh, we know the you know basic prohibited actions that are given to us to avoid right? meat eating, intoxication, etc. Right? Uh, but they engage in um, all type of impious acts and they do not take guidance from any of the scriptures. So they are outside of this uh, uh, rung of a uh, ladder, right? So that's not described by Rupa Goswami, but Srila Prabhupada gives us that context because many, many that many um, that we see are uh, Vikharmis, you can say, where we don't need to put them in one group, but then they then generally people uh, engage in impious acts and they do not take guidance from the scriptures. Um, but in the hierarchy from the lowest to the highest, uh, so here Rupa Goswami in this verse number 10, talks about, so it deals with hierarchy of persons who are dear to Krishna from bottom to the top. Most, okay. So again, I put this in a form of a pictorial way so that we understand because it's a long verse, a lot of information is packed in, but we've just delineated the, the, uh, the main groups that are defined in this particular verse. So karmis, with the guidance of Vedic knowledge, they work for material profit, right? So I have one slide where there's a lot of different description that is given as to karma or karmis, right? But in general, karma, karma means prescribed duty. But we also say karma is cause and effect and this whole structure is called as karma, right? But for practical purpose, so karmis means with the guidance. In general, it's supposed to be pious activities, right? So karmis with the guidance of Vedic knowledge work for material profit. That's what is given in the uh, purport, right? So I've just summarize that. Jnanis, Jnanis means in knowledge, they have this knowledge uh, and they definitely, because of that knowledge, they refrain or avoid, um, you know, um, illicit or illegal uh, sense uh, enjoyment activities. So they know it's a trap and it's a test and they don't want to fail the test. So they are definitely better than Jnanis, right? So one uh, rung of the ladder higher than the karmis. Of course, Vikarmis are outside of that. Then Bhaktas, right? So Bhaktas, they directly surrender to uh, Lord Krishna's uh, lotus feet and worship him, right? Um, so, so many of us may be, or all of you are Bhaktas, but some of us may not be there and we want to be Bhaktas, right? So, um, you know, how many of us can say that we have surrendered to Lord Krishna's lotus feet fully? We may worship him, but uh, what is the intensity of a worship? So our our aim is to become a bhakta, right? To try to surrender to Krishna and worship him um, uh, uh, with our love and devotion. But definitely there's a big difference between, uh, between the bhaktas and the gopis. So because gopis, it is said in this particular verse and in the translation, they don't know anything other than satisfying Krishna. So they don't satisfy themselves. They don't satisfy anyone else other than Krishna. They don't expect any return from Krishna. We know so many stories about their headache and they don't even mind going to the hell by, uh, you know, giving their uh, dust from their lotus feet. We have heard all these stories, right? So they don't expect any return from Krishna and they never forget Krishna at any time. So it's a beautiful, um, you know, nice purport and the translation from there, we've just extracted this and put them under each of those uh, uh, great, um, you know, groups groups here, so gopis. But then the highest, uh, according to this verse, and which we know as devotees of Lord Krishna, is Srimati Radharani and her kund, Radha kund. So Srimati Radharani is the highest of all the gopis, because within the gopis, Srimati Radharani is considered the highest, and no one can excel her uh, service to Krishna. And Radha kund is the most exalted place and is as dear uh, to Krishna as uh, Sri Radha. Now, some of you would have gone to uh, Radha Kund and Sham Kund. Um, I had the fortune of uh, being in, uh, taking a dip in the Radha Kund and Sham Kund. Uh, this was during Bahulashtami. So this was probably about 10 years ago. Uh, during the month of Damodar, uh, we have Bahulashtami. That's the day actually that, uh, I think it's 10.36, uh, where Krishna kills um, Arishta Suradhimen. And we know the past time where, you know, they said, you killed a male cow. Now, you, you know, Radharani and the Gopi said that, even though we read it in 10.36, it's it's an extraction from other Puranas that is uh, presented in the purport there, right? Because this past time is not part of Srimad Bhagavatam. And then, of course, Krishna, you know, dug his heels. He said, why would I go and take bath anywhere? Let all the holy places come here. And everything came. So that's why this Radha Kund and Sham Kund is a 
consolidation of all the holy waters from all over the universe right so it's like a one stop shopping right nowadays who buys printer separately fax machine separately i can just see mine you know it's all in one right four or five in one so similarly you go to a mall you get uh, you can buy you know you go to yorkdale mall you can buy a tv if you want you want to buy slippers shoes uh, you know anything that you want you can go there's one stop shopping so this <laughs> radha kund and sham kund is uh, i mean you didn't go to ganga does not matter because that water is supposed to have ganga yamuna saraswati godavari narmada sindhu kaveri and and uh, some of the holy waters from the higher planetary system lower planet everything is there in this um, in this radha kund as well so this is a pictorial um, uh, uh, depiction of this nectar of instruction verse number 10 it deals with hierarchy of persons who are dear to krishna so the dearest is shrimati radharani and her kund radha kund now i also put the verse number 9 uh, the gradation of holy places as well so uh, one of you had covered this and all of you have read this but again this will be a nice uh, gradual thing that's why i didn't put it like a ladder because can't say vaikuntha is the lowest or not except not in the line or in line with the karmis right that's not what we're saying here so vaikuntha is there and then higher than vaikuntha is mathura higher than mathura is vrindavan higher than vrindavan is gaur than hill and again it talks about radha kund being the highest right? so that's a gradation of holy places in verse number 9 and then in uh, verse number 10 is the hierarchy of persons who are dear to krishna so hopefully you will all appreciate uh, when there is a visual that accom- uh, accompanies these verses so that it will be very easy for you to remember so i would recommend you to take a photograph of this uh, if you would like uh, so that it's a quick refresher of verse number 10 and um, and then similarly verse number 9 which you would have already covered is this right so it 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 deals with uh, um, the gradation of holy places so um so little bit going into the into this uh, verse number Krishna. 10 are krishna are krishna pro sorry uh, would you please go back one second i want to take a picture sorry yeah sure okay one second yeah please feel free to take a picture um you know you you can just take one print out and put it in your wall and uh, anytime you want a quick refresher um you have it right? the details you will always remember right why why mathura is uh, better than or or supposed to be higher than right so we're not going to put a dark spot in vaikuntha or madura or vrindavan as we go up right so these are all greatest of all places but here little bit hierarchy is given so of course mathura is greater because krishna appeared there vrindavan because of uh, you know all the past times and govardhan hill because you know he was holding the govardhan hill you know physically for seven nights and seven days and many other reasons but uh, and but then radha kund is is the best of all right uh, if you also one want more, the previous one, one more right? slide yes thank you yeah no problem thank you very much yeah okay okay so krishna's energy as we know is spiritual marginal and material right so um, you know when jivas are under this maya which is which is material uh, everybody works for a sense gra- uh, gratification right so the vikarmis who are not part of this rung of ladder they were even below that uh it is said uh, they 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 you know work for only for money and sense gratification now don't get me wrong all of us are grihasthas we have to work to earn a living but then you know gradually we mold our lives in such a way that um you know whatever we do uh, as as has been dovetailed into god consciousness right so we work but we don't cheat you know you work overtime yeah i work 5 hours let me put it as 15 hours because i got a lot of work done we don't do things like that right? anything we we don't work for the manager but we work for the ultimate manager so you don't work for your manager or your manager's manager right we work for the ultimate manager because integrity is doing the things 
um, doing the right things even when nobody is watching us, right? So we know the definition of integrity. So um, even when nobody is watching, a manager is not watching, you get your things done. We're all grihasthas. We need to earn a living. And that's the responsibility. We need to do it with determination, right? So, but there is a difference between just, um, you know, acting um, in all in all illegal ways to make money so that there can be more sense gratification, even though it's temporary and without the guidance of Vedic knowledge, right? So um, so it, 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 it degrades us and puts us into this miserable birds in lower species, as well as money, animals and trees, it is said, and all the activities, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's anyway, it's all defeated, right? It's temporary, um, fleeing, fleeting, ephemeral, uh, but then there is a reaction to it, right? Too much of indulgence in any illegal activities, you know, um, this this activity, uh, you know, which is illegal towards the other sex, um, you know, uh, it translates into different diseases, you know, too much drinking, um, you know, kills that person, etc. right? So it has its own um, a reaction as well. The cause and effect is also there, but, um, you know, so much of uh, price to pay for this small amount of fleeing, fleeting happiness, right? So-called happiness. Um, so, uh, so as devotees, we are getting refined and refined. So we, we, we tend to lead our life uh, per the scriptures, right? So we are not there, you know, that's a gradual progression that all of us make. Nobody is perfect, but, um, you know, thanks to his divine grace, AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, that we have the basics within us to you know, to follow Krishna consciousness and progress very well in Krishna consciousness. So the two verses are very important where Lord Rishabh Dev, so we talked about, um, you know, a Prithu Maharaj in the fourth canto a few minutes ago, and uh, Lord Rishabh Dev's teaching is in, anybody can guess, unmute yourself, Lord Rishabh Dev's teaching. Lord Rishabh Dev, which canto he, his pastimes are uh, described? Oh, it's there. 5.5.4 .5 and 5.5, .5. yeah, fifth canto, right? So fifth canto is uh, Lord Rishabh Dev's uh, uh, teachings are there. Not only his teachings, his, 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 his uh, pastimes are there. And then following that, uh, you have uh, Bharat Maharaj, the eldest of his hundred sons. And then you also have, you know, how he became a deer. And then after deer, he becomes Jada Bharat and the wonderful, you know, interaction, you can say Samvada between uh, Rahuna and um, you know Jada Bharat is also there. All in the fifth canto, beautiful. So fifth canto means does not mean just this um, structure of the universe, which we find a little difficult to understand. That's not the only thing that is in the fifth canto. It's got beautiful, beautiful prayers. You know, so that's what you know. I really love it because um, we use a lot of these prayers uh, when when you perform fire sacrifice, right? So so many wonderful, wonderful prayers are there in the fifth canto, um, uh, glorifying various uh, entities. Okay, so it's there in Srimad Bhagavatam. It glorifies Agni glorifies Varuna, uh, so many prayers, so there's fascinating prayers um, to Lord Narshimadev as well uh, in the fifth canto. So if anybody is interested, uh, because we do some um, um, Dasavatar uh, Yagya as well, right? So you can all perform this in your house or at least you can chant these mantras. So beautiful mantras are there about many of these uh, Dasavatars in the fifth canto. So anyway, just a quick summary of fifth canto has got so much of information. So don't just fast forward or quickly read it. There's so much to um, you know, um, be blissful about when you read this. So here, uh, the, this is Lord Rishabh Dev's uh, teachings uh, to his son. Uh, to his sons, actually, 100 sons, right? So 5.5.4 and 5.5.5. So can uh, somebody read the English translation? I'm just keeping an eye on the time. So can somebody read the English translation of 554, please? Uh, Hare Krishna. He does not know that due to his past misdeeds, he has already received a body which, although temporary, is the cause of his misery. Actually, the living entity should not have taken on a material body, but he has been awarded the material body for sense gratification. Therefore, I think it not befitting an intelligent man to involve himself again in the activities of sense gratification by which he perpetually gets material bodies one after another. Beautiful. So very nice uh, uh, verse, right? So repetition causes retention, right? So more we keep hearing, 
even if we are not fully controlling our senses because it is a gradual progression right so we cannot just yeah from tomorrow i will be like this right so in many cases it's like internalizing the information and um, you know from the mind because once you internalize the information in your mind and keep repeating that then automatically the senses are following the leader which is the mind right so it, it, it's like a repetition causes retention so that's why you know we are still reading bhagavad gita it's only 700 verses but uh, you see more you read more we will understand there is always new information coming again and again even when we re- we just heard say 9.26 uh, patram pushpam verse today by one one speaker or reading the purport of shila prabhupad but then when you re- hear another person speak about it even 2 hours later there's so much of new information because this is like a zip file right when you double click it it expands so much more so can we get another devotee to read this nice verse 5.5.5 english translation as long as one does not inquire about the spiritual values of life one is defeated and subjected to miseries arising from ignorance be it sinful or pious karma has its resultant actions if a person is engaged in any kind of karma his mind is called karmatmaka colored with fruitive activity as long as the mind is impure consciousness is unclear and as long as one is absorbed in fruitive activity he has to accept a material body wonderful so these are very significant verses uh, very relevant to this nectar of uh, instruction verse number 10 okay so now we get into the details you know the description of each one of those categories that is described in this verse number uh, 10 so karmis they desire material profit so they want something in return right so they may even perform vedic sacrifices uh, to gain pious credits and attain heavenly planets right or or to the moon and enjoy thousands of years there but after exhausting their pious credits they return to us shine punya that wonderful verse 9.21 right so you know when you go to these places right so whether you are going to stay in a resort or not you go to a place like uh, jamaica you go to barbados you go to you know pattaya beach in thailand uh, these are beautiful places this is you can you can think of it like a practical example of this 9.21 verse right so all the credits pious credits that they've had uh, in this case you know somehow they've done pious deeds and they had enough money they had enough time to go on this all inclusive vacation say for example a week somewhere um they've done their prior pious credits and then they go there and they get everything that they want right it's just like a you know whatever they want they get it there but right from day 1 it's almost like minus 7 minus 6 days minus 5 days minus 4 days right so they know it's going to end similarly here um you know all the pious credits even following this vedic sacrifice when they do with the aim of you know getting something in this oh i'm doing this i'm pouring ghee i'm chanting i'm doing this you know it could be uh, not chanting because that is more that is spiritual but any pious activities when they do even knowingly or unknowingly uh, for hospitals or anything not with the conscious of um, helping somebody uh, so that they can do some spiritual activities you know it's a thought process it counts in in whatever we do as well right so so here um with the pious credits they go to the higher planetary system just you can think of somebody going to these beautiful places like switzerland etc for vacation for a week or two and then unfortunately they'll have to come back to uh, oakville and uh, uh, you know brampton and mississauga and scarborough right like after 7 8 days uh, they have to return or maybe two weeks they went but they have to come back right and then they will start worrying about oh my god all the bills that i need to pay for this trip that i took and everything else right so two weeks or one week away from work now i have to catch up all that work so i lost whatever i gained in this heavenly <laughs> trip now i have to pack everything and within two or three days i lose everything that i gained as well right so, so that's a pra- you know material example but similar is, is lord krishna is explaining so you do uh 
pious activities and then you go to a higher planetary system where the enjoyment is unlimited, you know, much, much more, but then they have to come back, right? So this transmigration, because to go to the higher planetary system, they don't, they don't go in the same body. After they die, you know, we can go to the higher planetary system and uh, then, um, then you come back, right? So that's, that's the karmi. So generally, it's, it's positive, uh, pious activities that they, uh, they do. So the per- purpose of human life is to get out of this threefold miseries, right? So threefold miseries in Sanskrit, it is said, um, you know, you would have heard all these mantras that are chanted, right? So we know Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, but we know many other mantras as well, all of you do. But also when you chant this, um, you, you have uh, suktas in 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 your know, Rigveda, right? Several several suktas are there. Agni sukta is the Agni mi ile purohi thai yagnasya. You, you chant those nine verses, the first nine verses of Rigveda, right? What do you do in the end? Om Shanti 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 He Hari He Om. Hari Om is like putting a zip, right? You put all the good things, uh, and then you put a zip, right? That's what you do when you say Hari Om. So the Shanti Shanti Shanti. Why do you chant that? You chant that to remove the threefold miseries that is mentioned in the red font here. What are the threefold miseries? Adi Atmika miseries. Adi Bautika miseries and Adi Devika miseries. Right? So that's repeated in Srimad Bhagavatam as well. So Adi Atmika is miseries caused by body and mind. Body and mind, you know, gray hair coming. Oh my God, I'm young, I'm losing hair, gray hair. I uh, have this arthritis pain, diabetes, blood pressure, whatnot, right? So it could be cancer. So all are miseries caused by body and mind. Mind is you know, whether I'll have a job, whether my daughter who went to college has not come back, the time is already seven, oh my God. So all that is miseries caused by body and mind. That is Adi Atmika misery. The second misery is Adi Bautika miseries. They are miseries, miseries caused by other living entities. And we know COVID, um, you know, virus uh, is, is other living entity that causes misery. It could be other living entity that caused misery could be an accident that is caused by a reckless drunk driver or careless driver, right? Miseries caused by other living entities, you know, dog biting, mosquitoes biting, scorpion biting, snake biting, whatever. All that are miseries caused by other living entities right could be a bad manager in your work could be a bad teacher in your school um you know all the dog barking you know when you go night shift and you're trying to sleep in the daytime dog barking or somebody calling you most of the times i'm assuming that is the case in your west end as well every time i get a call sir this is uh duck cleaning sir we have a great offer for you do you get that or it's just me Anyway, so it looks like it's just me, but um, many people have my number for duck cleaning. So it could be like you, you, you just, you know, were not feeling well and they keep calling you, right? So these are not a great misery, but you can just understand. I'm just giving some basic examples of uh, miseries caused by other living entities, right? And, uh, and um, you know, you, you, you can go in a plane. I go in the plane, you know, uh, unless you go in the business class, if you're not fortunate to go in the business class all the time, Believe you me, you can get crushed within two other passengers next to you. And, um, you know, they're pretty big. And, uh, you know, the problem comes when you're trying to put your hand in the hand rest. Whose hand rest is that? Uh, is that that guy's or yours? <laughs> it's like, oh, so, you know, these are small things. But, uh, you know, mis- misery is caused by other living entities. And, um, you know, there can be a, one of the slowest drivers, you know, like two drivers. There's only two um, you know, lanes and both of them are going so slowly and you are there rushing to give a class or whatever you have to go to work. You can't overtake both of them are going at the snail speed, right? So it could be miseries uh, or, or problems, right? So miseries caused by other living. And the third one is Adi, Adi, Adi Atmika, Adi Bhautika and Adi Devika. Adi Devika miseries are miseries caused, um, you know, by natural calamities, right? Tsunamis and earthquakes and whatnot, right? So the purpose of human life is to get out of this threefold miseries, right? So when we go to Vai Kunta, Kunta means miseries, Vai Kunta means no miseries, right? So um, spiritual world has got no misery. So everywhere else, there are miseries, even in the highest planet, right? Krishna says, um, so from the highest planet down to the lowest planet, all are places of miseries where there is repeated birth and death takes place. So, but death does not take place very often in the higher planetary system. It takes place 
very after a very long period but definitely even that even when they took this amrit churning of the ocean when you say immortality so our acharyas clearly explain immortality means they, their life span is extended multiple times more than they normally live but still at the end there is death right so one should be eager to understand the science of the soul which is the atma tattva so jnani so in this hierarchy then um, you know uh, rupa goswami is explaining about the jnani right so they are knowledgeable people who understand the higher values of life right and they also know the futility of the fruitive actions right so which which binds us to this body uh, uh, body to this material world right so we have to accept that they know that they don't want transmigration so anyani is liberated from ignorance and the three modes to a large extent and he sort of avoids these blind activities right so they are way better than the karmi uh, karmis right and bhaktas so the anyani's knowledge is impure until it becomes a bhakta or there is bhakti and directly he surrenders to the supreme personality of god and worships so bahunam janmanam ante so 7.19 bahunam janmanam ante gyanavan maam prapatyate vasudeva sarvam iti sa mahatma sa durlava so here it is said after many births and deaths right so after many births that he who actually knowledge surrenders unto me uh, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is such a great soul is very rare and that's what is mentioned such a great soul is very rare 7.19 and prema uh, bhakta means he loves krishna deeply so lord krishna as we know reciprocates um, according to the way we approach right etamam prapatyante 4.11 right so in this case he says you take 10 steps i will take 10 steps technically he takes more 100 steps but you go closer to him he'll come closer to you right so so you go b- away from him he'll go away so is exactly like that he reciprocates the way we approach it right um so he is so kind he does not he, for him you know he uh, fulfills the desires of karmis and jnanis as well so what to speak of bhaktas were closer to him right so 4.11 etamam prapatyante so in that particular verse you can think of you know when you they so they do a matching thing right like during this united way campaign in your workplaces you know they say your workplace would say you put 100 dollars we match that with 100 dollars right so 100 plus 100 dollars right so it goes to united way so in a way here krishna so you get you, you are more devoted to him so he reciprocates uh, uh, accordingly so those are bhaktas right so they are reciprocate with the lord very nicely and the lord reciprocates with them so the karmi so we talked about uh, the karmi so they enjoy they go up then they come down so this is the ferris wheel um you know that we are all used to in wonderland and in other places right so they go up sometimes and then come down so it's perpetually in this uh, ferris wheel which is what shila prabhupa teaches us to avoid right we don't want to get caught in this wheel of samsara and go around and around and round we want to get out of this ferris wheel so the gopi so now coming to the penultimate uh, um, hierarchy here the gopis are the best of all premi bhakta so we already talked about who is a premi bhakta right so here premi bhakta means he, he loves krishna more deeply than bhakta premi bhakta is little higher than bhaktas premi bhakta he loves krishna so deeply so here they are all premi bhaktas we have who has this unalloyed uh, devotion so we know in you know shrimad bhagavatam we read so much about the gopis and the gopi geet etc right so they don't know anything other than satisfying krishna they don't expect anything in return and never forget krishna although krishna seemingly causes them uh, suffering by leaving uh, vrindavan for mathura right but actually the gopis are always think of krishna um, even though they are away from him right like uh, uh, vipra alamba seva or thinking in separation is far far better than serving him directly but the highest the highest is uh, shrimati radharani uh, is the highest of all gopis no one can excel her uh, in her service to krishna and uh, it is said that even krishna cannot understand her attitude so he took the position and appeared as chaitanya mahaprabhu just to understand the transcendental feelings right um, because everybody you know loves krishna because he's so sweet but you know it is said how does the sugar like krishna's let's say krishna's uh, equal to sugar can sugar know its own sweetness you know sugar cannot know its sweetness right who can know the sweetness of uh, uh, the sugar of course it has to be an ant of course we when we drink uh, some milk or something putting sugar but who can taste the sweetness of 
sugar. It's only an ant. Sugar cannot taste its own sweetness. So Krishna wanted to appear in the form of Srimati Radharani. So the mood and the complexion of Srimati Radharani, but it was Lord Krishna. So that he can taste the sweetness of Krishna and see why everybody is thinking, uh, why is so much of devotion for me? So what is so great? I want to experience that. right? So that's what uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the position of Srimati Radharani just to understand the transcend, her transcendental feelings. And Radha Kund is the most exalted place and as dear to Lord Krishna as Srimati Radharani herself. So, um, you know, uh, again, I, I still have, uh, you know, in the other room, I have this uh, water from Radha Kund, right? So every time you go, you get some water and then you put it in the Kalash. And when you're doing, a, um, you know, a Kumba, uh, you know, Purna Kumba in your house, or you just sprinkle it in, you know, keep it in your puja room, um, you know, uh, Radha Kund water here, Sham Kund, Radha Kund water. But uh, same thing, when you go on pilgrimage, you go to, um, Gangotri, Yamunotri, you know, you get that that water and you'll see the difference in your life, right? So any problem, any material issues that you have, just sprinkle that water in your house or uh, near miss in your car for an accident, you know, just sprinkle it uh, on yourself and your family members and you'll see a huge difference because they have so much of potency, this water, because of the origin we know in 10.36 what is what is there in Radha Kund and Sham Kund and how it was formed etc and we have, we have firm faith Nishta right remember in the nine stages of uh, uh, devotional service not the nine process of devotional service so we have firm faith as to this water is a combination of all the most potent water that is there right so that's the firm faith that we have uh, in this and then you have the faith that it will solve any of your problems that you may have which are hindrances to your spiritual activities, right? So, so you will see the vast, um, you know, change in your life when when you have Radha Kund water in your house, and especially during Bahulashtami, uh, which which uh, happens very early in the month of Damodar. So on that day, if you can just you know worship the water, Radha Kund water, and sprinkle it, that will be amazing. And and um, Arishta Sura, we talked about it. Uh, Ten point three six is the Arishta Sura past time and, and and the eventual creation of Radha Kund and Sham Kund and Bahul Ashtami is the day, it's the eighth day, right? Ashtami, you know, the different uh, titis that you have, right? So you have Navami, which is the ninth day and Lord Ram appeared that there are um, um, Navamis, there are two Navamis in every month. So it's not like when you say Navami, that's the day, only one day that Lord Ramachandra appeared, right? Navami appears twice in a month, right? There are about 15 or 16 titis, uh, like Amavasya, Pavarnami, etc., right? So you have uh, Chaturdasi, Narshima Chaturdasi, then we have Trayodasi, the 13th day, like that Ashtami, Ashtami, like uh, Janmashtami, Bahulashtami, which is the eighth day of the waxing or the waning moon, right? So that's the eighth day. So we read that uh, that, that appears, uh, that comes during the month of Damodar. And best sadhaka, among many varieties of sadhakas, one who performed bhakti residing in the banks of Radha Kund is the best and dearest to uh, Sri Krishna and is the most fortunate person. So if anyone is interested, there is unbelievable verse that is uh, penned down by Lord Shiva. And um, this is, it's a very esoteric and secret verse about um, glorification of um, Srimati Radharani, uh, begging her to cast her sidelong glances on, on you. Amazing verses, beautiful meter. Um, then uh, that follows, um, you know, a glorification of Lord Krishna. These two verses were narrated by Lord Shiva to Parvati. If you are interested, I can send you the audio and uh, um, and the lyrics. And the reason I'm saying is, what is the relevance to this? It's because it talks about when you actually recite those two set of verses, not very long, you know, few verses in each. If you recite those verses in in Radha Kund, where your your neck deep in, in Radha Kund and you're able to chant that it is said that you'll be able to see Radha Krishna face to face. Right. So that's the um, you know, many of us have been to to Radha Kund and Sham Kund many times, but um, at that time I didn't know that such a beautiful, beautiful verse uh, exists, right? Set of verses exist. But uh, for those of you who are planning to go to uh, Radha Kund uh, anytime soon and uh, you would like to get the verse, audio and lyrics, uh, let me know. 
uh, through Mataji and then I can uh, send it to her and she can distribute it to all of you. So it's not like a, it's an esoteric one, but it is available uh, for your consumption and spiritual progress. Okay. So that, that's something that you can chant, you know, you keep your phone um, with that uh, words, even if you don't memorize it, you take it, you know, you're not going to drop it, hold the phone and then read that verse. It, it says X number of times and not just once, it says X number, why not? what else you know what do we lose right you have everything to gain so that's uh, that's something that you can chant in uh, radha kund uh, as well so a pure devotee in a spiritual body surcharged with ecstatic devotional feelings right so renders loving service to the divine couple radha govinda who perform the ashtakaliya leela so here it talks about ashtakaliya that's the end of this um, you know verse right? it talks about all these things and it talks about ashtakaliya leela that means lord krishna's pastimes with his devotees in eight periods of the day so one day is uh, divided into eight different um, phases or uh, timings right so it is pre dawn pastimes pastimes at dawn forenoon pastimes midday pastimes afternoon pastimes pastimes at dusk evening pastimes and midnight uh, pastimes as well right so you you you're supposed to meditate on these pastimes but for novice devotees you know newcomers uh, uh, shila Prabhupada, i took this quote uh, when when we, when he was in vrindavan where he said the ashtakalya leela or the Go, uh, govinda leela is not recommended for you uh, uh, it is for advanced devotees right but it is very uh, intimate descriptions are there um, uh, if if I, I i i may have that uh, description as well so if anybody is interested i can send you this uh, uh, description by um, by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. So he's the one who's, you know, put in so much of uh, information into each one of these uh, eight um, pastimes in different parts of the day. But it's very intimate descriptions are there. So that's why Prabhupada said it is for advanced devotees. But from our standpoint, when you're reading this Nectar of Instruction uh, number 10, or, uh, verse number 10, what we need to know is uh, towards the end of this verse, it talks about Ashtakalya Leela. So if, if you feel that you are, um, you know, advanced, then, um, you know, there is information available uh, about the activities of Lord Krishna at different times of the day. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the uh, end of that particular verse. But I, I, I also added this um, um, verse number uh, 4.17, right? So where here, it is said the intricacies of action are very hard to understand. Therefore, one should know properly what action is, what forbidden action is, and what inaction is, right? So the reason I put this slide here is because we talk about vikarmis and karmis, right? So there could be some confusion. Hey, what is vikarma? What is karma? What is uh, karma, etc. So basically, the condensed uh, explanation for this particular verse is karma means Generally, it's actions or prescribed duties. As we saw, they go up because of their karmic reactions and then they have to eventually come down. So generally, it brings good results, right? But this word karma can be used in many contexts. That's why you need a spiritual master to you know, guide us through, right? Like our, uh, um, so here, karma means it, it can mean action in general. Karma means it can mean the reaction to action ah you got the karma right so that means reaction to the karma it can also mean the whole system of action and reaction right and also it can refer to one specific category or one type of action that is pious action so it can be construed in many different ways but in general when we say karma means prescribed duties that results in good um brings in good results right according to 4.17 and the purport that goes with that Akarma means, uh, doesn't mean inactivity. It's not like you're sitting and doing nothing, right? So it's it, because opposite to karma is a karma, right? That word A is there, just like in English. When we say typical action, atypical. For those of you who follow uh, cricket, you know, IPL is going on and um, they say, oh, he hit a shot uh, like this. That's an atypical shot because typical shot is, so let's say like this but he played a shot like this. They say atypical shot because it's not typical. So when we say karma and when you say akarma, a karma, that means it's opposite. So akarma means no action. So it doesn't mean no, uh, it doesn't mean inactivity, but that activity that you're doing, arati to Krishna, yajna, ringing the bell for Krishna and devotion, that activities brings in no 
reaction no reaction means you still go back which is the most important thing you go back home back to god it because of all the things that will happen but there's no material reaction to it even you, you don't get the pious credit for it because if you get a pious credit uh, which which you are doing things away from krishna that means you go up shine uh, punya 9.21 and then you have to come back but here the akarmic actions will take you outside of this ferris wheel outside of this to go back home back to earth that's what it says akarma means does not mean mean inactivity but activities that bring in no reaction the activity that frees us from this cycle of birth and death no more ferris wheel prabhu ji just have a question does that include even our chanting also over here in which one does even our chanting comes under akarma yes of course activities? all the spiritual activities comes under akarma all devotional activities spiritual activities comes under akarma so karma means it's it's the uh, uh, even if you may follow the scriptures but you have a specific goal i want to go and enjoy that's what it says about karma but akarma is what is con is teaching us or prabhupada's teaching all our acharyas are teaching is act not in activities not like you are just sitting and doing nothing but you are doing the activity but by doing this archana or chanting and hearing that's all part of akarma this brings in no material reaction but these are the activities that frees one from the cycle of birth and death thank you prabhuji okay and vikarmas are prohibited action so this brings in bad results right uh, uh, of course i don't want to put the word main that but uh, vikarmic activity is mentioned in shrimad bhagavatam right in the first canto 17 chapter uh, you know intoxication no intoxication no meat eating no gambling and no illicit sex but then there's much more than that is a whole gambit of uh, uh what we should not do right like just like a doctor gives prescription what to do what not to do vedic scriptures uh, gives us uh, wonderful information on what to do what not to do as well right not just in shrimad bhagavatam not just in bhagavad gita chaitanya maha uh, chaitanya charitamrita but you look you know in 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 this world of vedas right um you know uh, for for this yagya activities uh, we we go deeper into vedas nowadays you know try to understand this is like amazing because hinduism means it's not like one book like quran one scripture like a bible right it's it's a ocean of scriptures together right um uh, of course prabhupada has given us the essence of what we need to know it's like shortcut right uh, but you know we all have been in krishna consciousness for you know few years now i think i think we 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 go deeper into it whatever you understand you understand deeply but then try to you know grasp more right let's let's look you know we, we do our chanting we read this but what, what else is there right which can enhance your knowledge of bhagavad gita enhance your knowledge of shrimad bhagavatam you know look beyond whenever you get a chance right so especially when i travel you know i try to uh, uh, go deeper into um you know other uh, scri- scriptures that will you know um increase your um appetite for bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam so vikarma is, is i mean killing people stealing cheating all those are prohibited actions right and um, you know th- those are all forming uh, coming under vikarma so key things karma they are prescribed duties generally but it can have many connotations akarma is spiritual activities that we do chanting hearing aarti yagya a uh, remembrance all that is akarma it does not mean inactivity but activity that brings no reaction so our main aim is akarma 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 that's what our main aim is right so that it frees us from this birth and death and vikarma are prohibited activities is divan grace is bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupadi ki jai so i just wanted to yeah go ahead uh, if uh, any comments suggestions i'm going to bring it back to the mm. particular page that we had so that uh, we can discuss more yes that's that's this was prabhu ji uh, in some of the times we can see uh, it intermediate stage in between like karma and akarma mm-hmm. some people have more percentage of karma and less percentage of karma and vice versa sometimes even we are doing a karma but uh, unknowingly we are doing karmas so what what should we say in that context okay 
So the short answer is refer to Bhagavad Gita 9.27. Anybody remembers the verse? 9.27. Yat karoshi yad asnashi yad juhoshi dadasi yad yad tapasya si kaunte ya tat kurushva matarpanam. So it's a beautiful verse. 9.26, 9.27, 9.28, right? It's, it's, it's coming together. So 9.26 Krishna says the most famous verse, you know, which is also repeated in Srimad Bhagavatam. Did you, all of you remember that? That's the only verse from Bhagavad Gita that is re repeated in Srimad Bhagavatam. A actual verse, not in the purport. Actual verse, verbatim. Only verse from Bhagavad Gita is there as a verse in Srimad Bhagavatam. Is this Patram Pushpam verse. Can anybody guess in which chapter it comes? Which pastime it comes? I think it's in 1081 or 1080. If I'm not mistaken, I think it should be in 1081. 10th canto, 81st chapter, Sudama Vipra, right? So he goes with this small bag of, uh, you know, broken rice and he goes in that particular passage. This actual verse is recited. Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yomi Bhakti Anyway, that is, that is 9.26 where Krishna is saying, you, 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 with love and devotion, you perform the action. Okay, my dear Krishna, I'm going to offer you this leaf, fruit, flower, water. And of course, at our homes, all the wonderful preparations that you or your Mataji's wives will make at home. Krishna, this is the plate. I'm offering it to you with Tulasi. So with love and devotion first, you do the action next. 9.27 Krishna says, whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you, you offer, right? So everything, offer it to me. That means the action is done and then you're offering it to Krishna. You see the difference? So 9.26, you before you offer you, you, you offer it to Krishna, you worship him in your mind and then you offer. 9.27, Krishna says, well, even if you did not think of me, I think that, that's your question. So some of us will be in karma, not necessarily in the vikarma mode, right? Uh, or akarma mode, sorry. So karma means your prescribed duties are there, but still you may not have consciously offered it to Krishna or you may be... You don't want that to go into the bucket of pious activity, so you end up in heavenly kingdom, right? Is that is that the understanding, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. So, so nine point two seven Krishna says, whatever you do, right? So, of course, it, it doesn't mean that it's illegal things that uh, somebody may be doing, right? So, it's either neutral or positive, right? So, neutral could be taking bath, right? Okay, you take bath. Okay, I can, you can always be grateful to Lord Krishna because I know so many people need help to take bath, right? Older people, they need somebody to come and uh, give them bath with a sponge. Uh, they have paralytic attack. Say, oh, Krishna, thank you. I'm able to take this beautiful bath. I can afford this hot water. I can afford this soap to take off the cleaning of the contamination for my body. Similarly, when I chant, uh, inner contamination goes. So many things to be grateful, right? So Krishna is saying, whatever you do, then offer it to me. So it's like, you know, you, 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 you lie down in your bed and take the blanket and put it on top of you or you take the blanket, put it on you and then lie down. It's the same, right? So 9.27, 9.26 is you, 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 um, you think of Lord Krishna, then offer it. 9.27 is you do, even if you did not think of me before, you offer it to me later on. And, and it says, right, um, um, the, uh, this is in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, right? Um, what verse is that? It's a beautiful verse. Um, yet, it, it, it's, it's, it's a verse together it goes. Yet, Karo Shedashna is 9.27. Kaye Navacha. Remember that verse? Kaye Navacha, Manasendreva, Budhyatmanava, Vanusra Swarava, Karomi et et Sakalam Parasmai, Narayana et Samarpayami. So, whatever, before you go to bed, my dear Krishna, I may not have consciously offered it to you, but whatever I did today, and I presented something and everybody said it's a great thing at my work, I offer it to you. You gave me the intelligence, right? So, Everything you can put it into the bucket. It's like many folders you have, many files you have. You just put it into the one big folder, right? Like that, you can put everything into this spiritual activity at the end of the day. Okay. So even if some of these actions are, you know, or neutral area or maybe trending towards this uh, karmic uh, uh, action, you want to put that as a karma. When you offer it to Krishna, everything becomes neutral, right? So, Kaya Navacha. Remember that verse is the 11th canto. If you're interested, I can send you the verse. You can do a search in database as well. Kaya Navacha Manasindreva. When you go to South India, the Sri Sampradayas, the last uh, uh, line is slightly modified, but the message is the same. Uh, it starts with Kaya Navacha Manasindreva. So, that's, that's how we can, um, you know, 
put the karmic activities into uh, akarmic activities by offering it to Lord Krishna. So remember 9.27 and this Kaya Namachavas. Does that answer your question, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you very much for the clarification. No Prabhu, I just want one clarification here when you were telling that uh, uh, offering the food uh, before, I mean, we have to offer before having, right? So uh, by chance, by mistake, suppose we are eating and we forgot to offer and uh, we maybe a bag of chips, we are just eating it. Sometimes it happens, right? So uh, what to do in that case, right? Like, uh, can we offer later or should we offer before that? Like, I mean, this just, tends to happen, right? Like nobody is perfect and you may, you may do. Uh, that's why when we are more conscious of eating anything, when we practice this, when we are eating chips, then obviously you will not forget when you're um, having your lunch or dinner, right? So it starts off with that, right? Anything, anything that we eat uh, as a snack or anything like that, we always uh, be grateful to Lord Krishna before we eat. But, but when we that we, we offer it to Lord Krishna and then of course Sarira with the Jal and Mahapasha, they go with it. Thank you. You know, this tongue can be controlled by so it, it goes like this, right? The, like even the Christians uh, offer the grace, right? The, the prayer before they eat, right? Uh, our Father in heaven, who are be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. And give us today our daily bread. Uh, you know, that's their uh, uh, you know uh, verse as well, right? But in, in in our case, we offer it to Lord Krishna and then we eat. But in some cases, we mentally offer. If you are not able to physically offer that, you may be in an aeroplane, you may be, uh, you know, at your work, they're giving you something to eat, chips or wh whatever, so salad or something. So at that time, you mentally offer it to Lord Krishna. And we know this Manasa Puja is very, very powerful, you know, uh, we know so many pastimes are there, especially in this longest verse in Srimad Bhagavatam, longest purport. Shavanam Kirtanam talks about this, uh, um, you know, one of the Puranas, this Brahmin was there hearing and then he offered all these wonderful, wonderful things in mind and then he was taken back home, back to God. So your question is, it's not just, you know, if you remember Krishna, yeah, we can either mentally offer or if facilities are there, then we will of course offer it to Krishna and then eat. But what if we forget? I mean, what? I, I, again, in, in, the, in the very end, uh, you know, this is a wonderful thing. So in the very end, you say, my dear Lord, I ate that. But because of your mercy, I was able to eat that. Everything is your creation. We all know, right? Even the water that is there, we get in the bottle of water. It's not Aquafina who's manufacturing, right? So everything is actually coming from the source, Krishna, right? Through rain or through uh, river, um, um, or sea water is filtered, right? So wherever you, everything is Krishna. So even the chips is Krishna. So we thank Krishna. So yes, we, we, I, I could not offer it to you. Uh, it is, it is something that can be offered, right? So we don't eat or offer prohibited things. So it could have, it should have been offered. I forgot, please forgive me. And of course he's the person who Krishna forgives everybody, right? Um, even Putana, she wanted to kill him. And then he took one small, he's always looking for the best, uh, in something, even though it may not be acceptable by us, right? Uh, oh, no, no, she had the mentality of a mother. She wanted to breastfeed me. Yeah, she had poison, but she had the mentality. So Krishna forgives everybody, right? And all the demons that were killed went back home, back to God, right? So who will do that? So Krishna forgives, and these, these are things, you know, we tend to forget. And then at the end of the day, it's very important. Before you go to bed, uh, you thank Krishna for the entire day that you've had. And yes, I may have made mistakes knowingly or unknowingly. Inadvertently, I would have made a mistake. But everything is yours. Thank you for providing everything that I need more, more than what I deserve. Please forgive me for any of the mistakes that may have done knowingly or unknowingly. That's the best you can do, right? So still you're conscious of God in the very end um, of the day, but you're grateful for what he gave you, with including the chips that you may not have offered. It's not like he's got a black book and we write, okay, one strike mark, two strike mark. That's not who Krishna is, right? Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Is, that, is that okay? That's what I will do. Okay. So again, it doesn't, um, you know, say in Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam. You know, so our God is loving God, right? So he's not like eternally banning somebody to hell. I don't want to say which religion or which culture is that. But, um, you know, ours is a loving God, right? So he's, he's not like eternally damned to hell or 
it's, it's always a evolving process so it's a reciprocation 4.11 so okay so does that uh, is that okay mother yes probably I, actually i just wanted to tell you like lots of was thinking like i was thinking like lots of words are coming from like i feel like it's like a affirmation words uh so i just feel that uh, maybe like you have to be more positive like when you come to when it comes to god because generally we tend to think negative when it comes to god like there is more fear like okay if i don't do don't do this okay i will have the punishment from god if i do this like oh my god like god may forgive i mean god may punish me so this is a fear i think most of the time which is like uh, within us like and because of that like many a times we tend to go away from god also that's yeah you're right you're right but but you know that is why it's important that we read the scriptures right like when we read more and more about um, you know chaitanya mahaprabhu about you know you can take you know so many past times will come right uh, jaga and madai right like can can you believe that can anybody do anything worse than what they did right like hitting the lord right or hitting you know think of even somebody hitting even materially when you hit somebody or throw a stone in somebody and make them bleed you know you know there's some jail time right for that person for doing things like materially itself we have so much of um, you know reaction to something like this but you know um nityananda prabhu and chaitanya mahaprabhu you see see how loving they were and then um you know what how did they uh, transform them right so similarly krishna we talked about putana and any one of these uh, demons right how uh, uh, krishna gave them the liberation right so even this past time you just heard about this brahmana who did this mental worship he had nothing he's a beggar beggar of the you can say beggar of all beggars right he did not have anything to offer but he is mentally is offering you know this is the golden plate this is yamuna water let me fill that in a cup golden cup with uh, uh, studded with gems uh, let me offer this and then the sweet rice he puts is ah oh, he, he really felt it was hot the sweet rice is more sweeter when it's cold right so and then you know it is said that lakshmi devi la uh, lakshmi devi was looking at lord vishnu was laughing because he is able to see that and then she asked uh, why are you laughing and then immediately lord vishnu said okay uh, vishnu dudas go bring him to to uh, to the heaven uh, to the spiritual world right so he is so merciful and so kind even when nobody even when this person didn't even offer he is taking him to the highest level looking for the best in everything right we see the prabhupada has mentioned about this bee and the fly right so krishna is like a bee he always looks at good things right so the bee the bee always goes to nectar even if this garbage but there's a beautiful flower there he will leave all the garbage and the bee will go to the nectar right whereas the fly um you know it, it could be the best of laddus and everything is there but there's a filth there the fly will go to the filth right so krishna is always looking for best he's not looking to punish anybody he's there to forgive us and he wants us to go back home back to god so that's the confidence that we need it's not like eternally it's one way or highway if you don't do this you're eternally damned right so even in bhagavad gita he says even if you have you're worshiping the devatas right that faith is given by me he saying right so uh, he does not prohibit anything he's not oh you're a worshipper of this so you are eternally damned you cannot come to no it's a gradual progression he's there to um, make us evolve in god consciousness and go back home back to god so we should not have this fear that this god is a very fearful person waiting to punish us no he's trying he's, he's desperately wanting to deliver us right so he's watching whatever we are doing he's helping us he's protecting us in every step of the way Thanks a lot, Prabhu. It was so positive and really very nice to hear it from you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. So I think we are um, at the one and a half hours mark. So, um, Mother, any last uh, thoughts, comments? Uh... Uh, I just want to say, Prabhu Ji, thank you so much. Uh, just. Um, like everything was like wonderful as always one thing is stuck in my mind prabhu ji <laughs> when you mentioned that that if you think you are advanced so how we can think prabhu ji that we are advanced is that that the moment we will think we are advanced we are like whatever we are we are going to fall from there very true but uh, relatively speaking right relatively speaking um you know we are all in this highway 
some cars are going fast some cars are going slow some cars are big some cars are small some cars are going in the opposite direction which is not good so you know uh, relatively speaking when we say advances where we were few years ago and where we are now the whole scripture is is for us to change positively right like in the right way right this is not a forum to teach others what to do and what not to do is for us to do the right things and not do the wrong things right so pretty much how do you know that you are advancing is where you are your own gauge right so where you where we were few years ago few days ago few moments ago and where we are now right and that's the progression of our evolution in god consciousness right? so we only we know no one else will know right so if if uh, and i'm pretty sure most of you or all of you are uh, are definitely advanced than me i can say that because i know where i am um so so you're right in that case we cannot think that uh, we are advanced even if many of you are advanced but uh, you know you should you should pat yourself as to where where each one of us were before and where you are now that's the gauge for us to know that we are progressing in the right direction yes okay yes prabhuji okay Thank so uh, i think i will will conclude uh, with this wonderful picture the summary of um, um verse number 10 and uh, we will talk to you um, on another uh, session hare yeah. krishna hare krishna hare krishna krishna hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare shila prabhu pad ki jai gaurav premanand hari 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 thank you so much hare krishna thank you so much prabhu ji